Chiara Duraziniam, I'm very happy to be with you today and teaching a little bit about Commedia dell'arte. So what is Commedia dell'arte? Commedia dell'arte is a particular kind of theater that originated in Italy about 500 years ago. And it started as a street theater to entertain the passers-by in Italian streets and squares. Later, it became very, very famous and big. And so, uh, Commedia dell'Arte theater companies were invited in royal courts to perform for kings and queens all over Europe. So, France, Spain, England, Poland, Russia, Germany, and so on. Pantalone. Pantalone is the master of his servant Arlecchino. He's a very rich merchant from Venice, northern Italy. He's so rich that he's also stingy and very greedy. He wears a red costume, a black cape, and this is his leather mask. Now, he's so old that he's not uh, 85, he's 374, let's say. So, all these years, way, way, way over his shoulders. So, he's very, very low, close to the floor. His hands are always counting money, and in fact, he has a little purse full of the soldi, money, and sometimes the hands go in the back like this. Now let's take a look at his feet. His feet are open like this, his legs are bent, and he walks like this with little kicks. And now this is pantalone. So the music and the instruments used in Commedia dell'arte were important for three reasons. First, they helped get people's attention out in the street, just the same way the masks did when it wasn't always easy to attract an audience. Second, they helped tell the audience, even if they walked in in the middle of the scene, something about the characters and about what was going on. Just like when you're watching a movie, the soundtrack, the music that's going on in the background, can make you think you should be happy or sad or scared or whatever. And third, because in the Renaissance certain types of instruments were associated with certain types of people, rich or poor, upper class or lower class, nice or not so nice. For Pantalone, I'll play the Renaissance flute. And some of you may have played the flute before, either in band or taking it from a teacher, and uh, I bet it didn't look like this. So this is the Renaissance flute, and you can see that it's made of wood, and it has no keys, just six finger holes, and then a seventh one that you blow into. And the flute in the Renaissance was associated with wealthier upper class people, because it had a very pretty sound, and because it wasn't that loud, so you could play it indoors, and it was popular for amateur musicians to play indoors. It was also associated with young or attractive people because you don't have to make funny faces or do weird things with your face in order to play the flute the way you do to say, play the bagpipes or an instrument like that. Now, Pantalone isn't actually young or attractive, but he thinks he is. And he also likes to dance because in the Renaissance, dancing was very important for people who were rich or upper class as a way to meet people. So I'm going to play a dance that was very popular in the Renaissance called a Gagliarda or a Cinque Passo. And the name of the dance is La Traditora Mi Fa Morire.
Arlecchino, Arlecchino, I'm so hungry. Oh, tanta fame, fame, fame. I'm so hungry too. Too much, too much, too much. I'm so hungry. I'm so empty e vuota. Napolitana, and there are many uh, varieties um, all over southern Italy. Matter of fact, in Puglia, they often call it pizzica, which means pinch, which refers to the bite of that spider again. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of different types of tarantella, um, and uh, that particular one was the tarantella napolitana, so the type of tarantella that's native to the to Naples and the area around there.